Using congruent triangles, section 5.7. Our objective is to use congruent triangles to solve problems and prove constructions. Our essential question, how can you use triangles to make indirect measurements? All right, in the real world, we can um, use uh, congruent triangles to help us indirectly measure across bodies of water, which is illustrated here by a land surveyor. And here's what a real-life land survey surveyor's equipment might look like. And here's some information about land surveyors that you could uh, read up on and how much they make annually according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which I thought you might be interested in in case this might be um, your future. And uh, land surveyors use um, direct measurements on one side of the land here, as illustrated here, to help indirectly measure across bodies of water. It is also known that um, one of Napoleon's officers used indirect measurement to uh, measure the uh, distance across a body of water. And um, what he did is he kind of lowered his hat and looked across using the tip of his hat as far as he could see and then turned and marked that same distance on the side of the land that he could um, mark off physically. And then that helped him indirectly figure out the measure across the water. Pretty cool stuff. It's just a reminder that once we've proven triangles congruent, then all remaining parts are also congruent. And we use CPCTC to prove that. All right, so let's see how we can use um, corresponding parts of congruent triangles congruent to prove that side QT is congruent to side ST as illustrated in this picture of a hand glider. Start by sketching the picture with all available markings of your givens and then also any information that you can deduce from a picture such as the fact that these two um, angles are supplementary and these two angles are supplementary if angles 1 and angle 2 are congruent to each other, then that means that the supplements are also congruent. And that's information that we'll eventually put in our proof based on our supplementary angles. So here's the start of your proof. You've got your givens in separate boxes. And remember, anytime triangles share a side, then by reflexive property, they are congruent. So that's included in the top row with your givens. And then we can deduce that angles R, Q, T, and 1 are supplementary. We can also deduce that angles R, S, T, and angle 2 are supplementary because linear pair implies supplementary. All right, so let's see where we can go next. Um, from the supplementary, we can conclude that um, the two angles will sum to be 180 degrees. So we have our two statements uh, illustrating that information. And then if angle one is congruent to angle two and the two pairs of supplementary angles add up to 180, by substitution, we can conclude that angle RQT is congruent to angle RST. And then that's one of our parts, uh, the one of the remaining parts, because earlier we had angles identified and sides identified. Now we have another pair of angles. So that's three total parts that all arrow to conclude that triangle RQT, sorry, QRT is congruent to triangle SRT because of angle angle side implies congruent triangles. Once your triangles are congruent, then all remaining parts are congruent by saying QT is congruent to ST because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, so take a moment to explain how you can prove that angle A is congruent to angle C. So pause the video and see if you can come up with your own explanation based on the proof you just looked at and studied. Okay, so your explanation should include something to the effect of mentioning all three pairs of sides are congruent because anytime two, a, two triangles are sharing the same side, you have, uh, by the reflexive property, congruent sides congruent to itself in this scenario. Uh, side BD is congruent to BD by the reflexive property of congruence. So by the side, side, side implies 
congruent triangles, we can conclude that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. And since corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, we can conclude that angle A is congruent to angle C. All right, example two, using congruent triangles for measurement, I want to answer this question. How can the distance across a river be calculated? So if we're standing here, how can I figure out the length across this river? Let's see. So some things to think about. You can use the following method to find the distance across the river from point N to point P. So we have from here to here. You can place a stake at K on the near side so that NK is perpendicular to NP. In other words, forms a right angle. You can find point M, which is going to be the midpoint of NK. And then locate point L so that NK is perpendicular to KL, also forming a right triangle. And then locate point L, P, and M collinear. And explain how this plan allows you to find the distance. And just keep in mind, you cannot easily measure a length directly. You can make conclusions about the length indirectly. So usually by calculations based on known lengths, which is what we're doing here. We figure out known lengths on the same side of the bank of the river to allow us to figure out indirectly measurements across the river that we can't actually physically measure. All right, so let's take a look at this proof. Always start by sketching and identifying your markings based on givens. So we're given that NK, side NK is perpendicular to side NP and side NK is perpendicular to side KL. It's okay to include these two statements together in the same box and state the given reason. And that's going to lead us to conclude that angle N and angle K are right angles because perpendicular lines imply right angles. And then we can conclude that angle N is congruent to angle K because right angles implies congruent angles. And then we know by looking at our picture that angle KML is congruent to K. Uh, angle NMP because vertical angles implies congruent angles and then we know that M is midpoint of side NK which is given and then that allows us to conclude that side NM is congruent to side MK because midpoint implies two congruent collinear segments and if you're keeping track of all your segments um, sides and angles that are congruent you have your AAS, so in the correct order, we would say triangle MLK is congruent to triangle MPN, reason, angle, side, angle, implies congruent triangles. And then if once the triangles are congruent, all other parts are congruent, so then we can conclude that side KL is congruent to side NP because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So you can find the distance NP across the river by measuring side KL. Okay, this is an extra example too that I want you to look at with actual measurements. If I were to give you a situation to ask you um, to indirectly measure the distance across a body of water, um, using a, a proof, prove that the triangles are congruent, and then draw conclusions about what measurements in this case, the measurement of BC. So take time, pause the video, try this one out. First, write a proof, and then tell me your conclusions about the length of BC. Okay, check your answers for your proof. See if you came up with the same statements and reasons. Not necessarily in this exact arrangement. Remember, you can put your boxes anywhere in your workspace. As long as you have your statements and reasons that match up as closely as possible to this proof. So take time, check your answers. And then based on the proof that the two triangles are congruent, we can conclude that all other corresponding parts are congruent. So AD is congruent to BC, which means if AD is 57 yards, then BC is 57 yards. So our conclusion is the distance from A to D is the same as the distance from B to C 
which is 57 yards. All right, so let's take a look at example three, planning a proof involving pairs of triangles. So use the given information to write a plan for proving that triangle BCE is congruent to triangle DCE. So let's just kind of further understand how to attack any proof. So there's several things to think about here. So the first thing to think about is that in triangle BCE and triangle DCE, you can use the given that angle one is congruent to angle two and that CE is congruent to itself. Remember, anytime two figures are sharing a side, you can always use reflexive property to show congruence of a side. So then, then we could show that triangle BCE is congruent to triangle uh, DCE by side angle side. So that's one thing to think about. Then that means we need to somehow con prove that side CB is congruent to side CD. So first you can prove that the triangles are congruent. And since it is given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and then we also see on the other side angle 3 congruent to angle 4, we can use the CE congruent to itself by the reflexive property. But then we could prove that triangle CBA is congruent to triangle CDA using angle side angle implies congruent triangles. So if we put all these ideas together, you can use the angle side angle implies congruent triangles to prove that triangle CBA congruent to CDA, then state that CB is congruent to CD, and then use the side angle side implies congruent triangles to prove that triangle BCE is congruent to triangle DCE. So it's a good idea to plan out your proofs. Think of it in multiple ways and ultimately getting you to prove your final statement, final conclusion. All right, this final example of today's lesson, example four, is proving a construction. We want to write a proof to verify that the construction for copying an angle is valid. So take a moment to look at this uh, construction and read through all the steps, try it on your own, and then we'll write the proof together. So after you have your construction of the two angles, angle A and angle D, add segment BC and segment EF to the diagram. So it's these markings here. So the straight segment from your arc marks. And in the construction, one compass setting determines segment AB, segment DE, segment AC, and segment DF. And another compass setting determines segment BC and segment EF. So you can assume the following as given statements. Side AB is congruent to side DE because it had the same um, compass settings. And AC is congruent to DF, again, had the same compass settings. And BC is congruent to EF. We want to prove that angle D is congruent to angle A. So to plan the proof, you want to state that triangle DEF is congruent to triangle ABC so that you can conclude that angle D is congruent to angle A. So here's the plan in action. For your statements, all pairs of corresponding sides are congruent, reason given, which means we can then conclude by side, side, side that triangle DEF is congruent to triangle ABC. And once the triangles are congruent, you can conclude that all remaining parts of the triangles are congruent, which allows us to say that angle D is congruent to angle A because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, strength and growth come only through continuous effort and struggle. Napoleon Hill. So power through, students. We're almost through with Unit 5. Thank you for taking quality notes. Bring them to class, and we'll do some practice problems. See you soon.